Transition to Post-Secondary Practical Strategies, presented by Andrea Belial, Disability Coordinator from Central Lakes College. Joyce Cushel, Disability Services, St. Cloud State University. Marilyn Weber, Director of Academic Support, South Central College. Debbie Tillman, Disability Director, Normandale Community College. College courses can provide academic challenges to students, especially students unprepared for the additional academic rigors experienced at the post-secondary level. Students who have learned practical strategies while they are in high school will have a smoother transition to college as the skills that have been learned can be implemented in the college. In addition, learned strategies will help a student to be a more independent learner, which is especially needed in the post-secondary environment. What sorts of strategies are helpful in order for a student to be successful? Some students have implemented learning strategies without even knowing that they have done so. Elementary students learned enormous amounts of information through various memorization techniques such as putting words to music. How many students know their ABCs because the letters were put in order to a known tune? There are many other strategies that can be implemented that students may not have learned before high school or college in other areas, such as test taking, note taking, reading, as well as skills for regulating time and classroom materials. Let's discuss how students learn best. Some students learn more easily when they have information said or read to them, which probably means they are an auditory learner. Some students have difficulty when a teacher is speaking and does not provide any visual information, such as PowerPoints or a study guide. So these students may be visual learners. Other students are more active learners, students who want to paint a picture, make a piece of furniture, or fix some machinery. You probably are seeing yourself in one or more of these descriptions. Most people are all of these types of learners in some way, auditory, visual, or tactile kinesthetic. Instructors may not provide information to you in the way that you learn best, but if you understand yourself and how you learn, you can adapt your classroom material to a mode that will help you learn. What do you mean by that? If you know the way you learn, you can work to implement strategies in the classroom or while you study so the materials are in a mode that helps you learn best. For instance, if you are an auditory learner, you could audio record your classroom lectures either by using a recording device or a note-taking system such as a pulse pen, smart pen, so you could listen to the lecture information after class. You could also request audiobooks through your high school case manager or college disability coordinator so that you would have a visual and auditory version of your books. Visual learners could have the book open in class so they can refer to visuals or could ask the instructor for a copy of the PowerPoints if they are not already provided. Studying and reading your material out loud while doing an activity such as memorizing information while pedaling a stationary bicycle can help many students learn faster and more thoroughly. This is especially helpful if you are a tactile kinesthetic learner. Do you know what kind of learner you are? If you don't, start thinking about how you learn best. You could also take a learning assessment which will help you understand more about yourself and how you learn. Once you realize how you learn best, you should discuss with your teachers other strategies that can be implemented both in high school and college so that you have more study strategies that complement your learning mode. Memorization techniques are very important skills to have while in high school and college, but for many students, the need to memorize information increases in the college environment. All of these memorization steps may not be needed for all situations, so you will want to determine what techniques are most suited to the material that needs to be memorized. First off, you have to be interested in your material in order to memorize it, so you should establish a need to remember. This may involve rethinking why you are in college, and remind yourself that this class is what you need in order to complete your major or earn a college degree. Second, memorize information from general to specific. You may want to study the big picture and then learn the smaller details that are part of a larger thought. Third, organize the information you need to remember, which gives your brain an additional level of understanding. Sort and arrange in a way that makes remembering easy. 
One way of doing this is to create different categories that relate to each other, which may require rewriting the material so that you can see the information split into various categories. Fourth, use a visualization technique. Picture in your mind what you wish to remember or draw a picture with the information you are trying to remember embedded in the picture. Fifth, relate. Form associations between new ideas you wish to remember to things that you already know. For instance, if the material reminds you of something else or is similar to another process, write that in your notes so that is what you think about every time you look at the material. Sixth, repeat. State information in your own words and use multiple senses to help you encode information. You may want to repeat information verbally or rewrite everything or both. The more senses you use, the more information will stick. Doing these strategies will increase your ability to remember large amounts of information much easier and faster. Having strong study skills in college is another important skill. Here are some strategies to increase your study skills in an effective way. First, think positively. Tell yourself, I can learn this. Negative thoughts create negative energy, which can open up the door for students to give up or quit. So remember why you were in college, your goals, and be positive. Study in healthy ways by only studying in one to three hour shifts. If you study for too long at a time, you will exhaust yourself. Take a three to five minute break for each 30 minutes of studying to stretch, walk around, or get something to eat or drink. Study when you are well rested and relaxed. If you stay up late and are tired, you will not be able to be productive when studying. Figure out when your most productive awake times are and study during those times. Work on what you like the least first when you are the freshest and save the homework and projects you like for last as a reward to yourself for completing your other work. Stay nourished with healthy foods. Your brain needs food to function well, so remember to make healthy choices such as nuts, fruit, and lots of water. Study before and after class. A good strategy is to read the text assignments before class so that you have an idea about the material when it is presented in class. Review your class notes while they are fresh in your mind and add notes that you may have missed. Set some time aside in your schedule to review your notes after class or later that evening. Allow for sufficient study time for each course. You should generally be studying two hours for each hour of class. If you are having difficulty learning new material, meet with your instructor or a tutor when needed. College instructors have posted office hours, so if you don't understand an assignment or want assistance with a paper, talk to your instructor. Most colleges will have some sort of tutoring center, too, so ask about the tutoring services at your college and how this service is used. If you struggle with taking tests, try some of these strategies to make test taking a little more manageable. There are helpful things to try before the test, during the test, and after the test. Before a test, arrive to your class early so you don't have to worry about being late. If you are late, you will increase your anxiety before the test even gets started. If you have a comfortable spot in the room that you like to sit, you will want to get to class early to get that spot. Don't cram before the test either. It is inefficient and can even be harmful. Learn the exam format before the test if possible. Are the test questions multiple choice, short answer, true, false, or essay? That way you know what to expect and won't have as many surprises. Before the test, make a plan to review. The more prepared you are, the more confident you will be. Try to determine what may be tested. Some instructors will have review guides, but if they don't, create your own based on the information from class, including your classroom notes and book information. Lastly, if you are anxious, research has shown that if you write down all your anxieties 10 minutes before taking a test, you will have better results. If you are a student with a disability, be sure to set up your testing accommodations before you take your exam if needed. Testing accommodations may include extra time, a quiet place, audio recorded, and enlarged, to name a few. Many students are more successful if they implement and use a testing accommodation. When you begin your test, think positively. 
Remind yourself that you studied hard and prepared for the test. When you first receive your test and if scratch paper or writing on a test is allowed, do a memory dump. Write down what you think you will need to remember, such as formulas, facts, or names. While taking the test, read the directions carefully. Look over the sections of the test and budget your time for each section based on the amount of time that's available for testing. Do the section of the test that you know the best first. Don't worry about how fast other people finish their tests, just concentrate on your own test. Read each question twice before answering so you are sure to understand the questions completely. Go with your first instinct. Usually the first answer that comes to mind is correct. When you're stuck on a question, cross off the answers that you know are wrong, and if you're not sure of the answer, just move on to the next test question. Before you hand your test in, look it over to be sure you did not miss anything, especially the questions that were not answered. After your test is graded, read any comments from your instructor carefully so you understand any mistakes that you may have made. Ask your instructor for clarification for anything you still don't understand. If needed, visit your instructor during office hours to discuss what you may not have understood. Look back at your book and notes and jot down information that you learned from the test. Note taking is an essential skill in college that can only be refined through the practice of taking notes during class. Notes need to be clear and concise, which is more effective than taking long, complicated notes. Be sure to organize your notes by giving each sheet a title and date that the notes were taken. This helps when studying or when you need to find course information later. If there is something you don't understand, ask. If you can't ask right at that moment, put a question mark in your notes where you would like some clarification and be sure to ask the instructor later. It also helps to read your assignments and homework questions before class so that you understand what is being discussed in class. You may also want to get permission to audio record the lecture so that you can listen to the material after class. Many electronic devices have the ability to record, or you could also find out about using a pulse pen, smart pen, that has the capability to write and record at the same time. Immediately after class, without looking at the notes you have taken, try to recall as much information as possible and write these down. Then compare those to your notes and confirm what you have learned and what you may have missed. This will also help you know if you need to check the book, the recording of the lecture, or your instructor for further content clarification. Learning how to manage your time effectively is absolutely essential to being successful in college. A time management plan includes prioritizing tasks, implementing due dates, breaking down assignments, and scheduling times to be in class, to study, work, do errands, and attend appointments. The first thing that needs to be determined is the choice of a time management system. You could choose to use a planner, phone, assignment log, or a calendar. You can find paper copies of these or applications on phones and other electronic devices. Choose what will work for you. Begin by entering dates and information such as due dates, appointments, your work schedule, and weekends away. In order to stay organized with your schoolwork, pay special attention to when assignments are given and when they are due. When you review your schedule at the beginning of the week, note what is due that week and the following few weeks so that you don't forget about bigger projects and tests. Time management also involves prioritizing your tasks. Make a list, but don't make it too long or you may feel overwhelmed. Schedule fixed blocks of time to study this information should be added to your planner or calendar so you remember to follow your study schedule each week. This could mean that every Monday and Wednesday you work on math for two hours and then English for one hour. Tuesdays and Thursdays you work on psychology for two hours and so forth. You should also include time for errands, social time, and relaxation in your schedule. These things are all important when done at the appropriate time. You don't want to burn yourself out, so make sure to schedule time for these things too. Also allow flexibility of open time for the unexpected. Life happens, so you need to be ready to shift things around as needed. Realistic goals need to be set when studying. Many students will underestimate how long an assignment will take to complete, so that's why beginning assignments earlier is even more important. 
Use your planner to break down assignments. Determine all of the steps needed in order to complete an assignment and put the steps in your calendar or planner. Time wasters need to be considered as well. For example, if you spend a lot of time playing online games, try cutting this out of your schedule to see how it affects the amount of schoolwork you can get done. You might be surprised. You could also set a timer for yourself to do something fun for a few minutes, but then be reminded that it is time to get back to studying. Students with good time management skills have an awareness of what should be done each day. When that happens, anxiety is decreased because assignments have been thought about and studying has occurred for projects and tests long before they are due. Once studying is done for that day, get ready for the next day by putting everything in your backpack, including papers due or books that need to be used in class. There is a lot more reading assigned in college. In high school, you may take weeks or even a month to go through a chapter while in college, you may be assigned a chapter or more a day. That means having to read many more pages, chapters at a time. In addition, instructors may assign large amounts of reading that is never reviewed in class, but that you will be responsible to have learned for an exam. With the greater amount of information you will be required to read and learn, you may want to find a reading strategy that helps you be a more efficient learner. The SQ3R reading method is a great strategy. Survey, question, read, recall, and review. Survey. Preview the assignment material to be studied by scanning the text quickly to discover the central concept. From your preview, formulate an overall picture and purpose of what you are going to study. Question. Question what you need to learn in terms of what, why, how, who, and where to support the central concept. Write these questions in the margins of your textbook or on the top of your study notes. Read. Read specifically to answer the questions. Most paragraphs contain one or more main ideas in support of a concept. Locate and highlight them with a marker. Make notes in the margins. Pay attention to bolded or italicized type and to tables, graphs, and illustrations. Recall. Pause periodically to recall in your own words the important ideas you have read. Review. Go through and see if you answered all of your questions and understood the new material. Also, go back and reread difficult parts you may have missed in the recall. We have discussed a lot about learning, both how you learn best as well as strategies for study and organization. Think about what's been presented and start implementing even one study strategy right now. If you are not using a planner or if you have tried using one before and it was only used for a few weeks, try again, but maybe try a new organizational method. This is about your life and the need to be organized will not go away when you graduate from high school or college. Learn to start working on your assignments when they are assigned rather than the night before, which will decrease your anxiety and increase the quality of your work. In other words, now is the time to become a more independent, successful learner. Thanks for joining us.